From previous lesson, you have learned how to conduct tests using the traditional method and probability value method or p-value method in one population and you were able to apply the formula of z-test and the steps in testing in problem solving. That is, when n sample size is greater than or equal to 30 and yung ating population standard deviation ay given. If ever naman yung ating n is less than 30, pwede pa rin gamitin ang z-test provided that the population is normally distributed and given yung population standard deviation. For this week, pag-aaralan naman natin ang t-test for, I mean, for one sample pa rin. Okay? And here is our lesson objective. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to test the hypothesis when population standard deviation sigma is unknown using the t-test. So, hindi given yung ating population standard deviation, t-test ang gagamitin. Okay. Again, when the population standard deviation is unknown, the z-test is not typically used for testing the hypothesis involving means. A different test called the t-test is used. And the distribution of the variable should be approximately normal. So, pag hindi given yung ating population standard deviation, we're going to apply t-test okay, in testing the hypothesis involving means. And of course, dapat yung ating uh, variable ay approximately normal. And the formula to be used kapag t-test is this one. t equals x bar minus mu all over s over square root of n. Yung ating x bar yun yung sample mean, mu yung hypothesized population mean, sample is standard deviation, and n is the sample size. So, papansin ninyo, instead of sigma, ang gagamitin natin dito yung s kasi hindi nga given yung ating population standard deviation. Uh, so ang gagamitan na ngayon natin ay sample standard deviation in solving for the t-value. Okay? And the t-distribution is similar to the standard normal distribution in the following ways. Number one, bell-shaped din siya tulad ng normal distribution, symmetric din siya sa mean, and yung mean, median, and mode equal to zero located at the center of the distribution. And of course, the curve approaches but never touches the x-axis or siya ay asymptotic. Okay? Asymptotic yung ating curve just like the normal distribution. And t-distribution is different naman from the normal distribution. Number one, the variance is greater than one. Sa normal distribution, var variance equal to one. And ang t-distribution natin, family of curves. Okay? At yung family of curves, based on the degrees of freedom, which is a number related to sample size. I'm going to discuss later in degrees of freedom at family of curves. Unlike the normal distribution, isa lang siyang curve. Well, t-distribution, family of curves. And last, as the sample size increases, yung ating t-distribution approaches the normal distribution. So, pag palaki ng palaki yung sample size natin, yung ating, ating t-distribution magiging uh, papalapit na papalapit man sa normal distribution. Okay? Alam yung degrees of freedom. It says, degrees of freedom are the number of values that are free to vary after a sample statistics has been computed and they tell the researcher which specific curve to use when a distribution consists of a family of curves. Let me give you an example to better understand kung ano ba yung degrees of freedom. Let's say we have the mean of 5 values is 10. Ibig sabihin, ang average niya ay 10 at yung number of values natin ay 5. Okay? Let us consider yung 5 natin, yun yung ating n. Okay? At ang average of these 5 values is equal to 10. Therefore, there are 4 of the 5 values are free to vary. Pwedeng magbago, or they are free to vary yung 4 values niya. Okay? Ano yun? Let's say the first value is 8. The second value is 7. Okay? The third and fourth values are 10 and 9. So, ibig sabihin, para makuha natin yung sum of 50 and an average of 10 because if we want to determine the average of these five values, we're going to divide the sum of these five values by 5. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ang sum natin ay 50 should be 50 and the mean should be equal to 10. So, hindi na pwedeng mag-vary yung ating fifth value. Dahil wala na siyang choice, dahil para magkamero ng sum of 50 at mean of 10, kailangan yung ating fifth value is 16. Wala nang iba. Yung 8, 7, 10, and 9, the first, second, and third, fourth values, 
We are free to vary. Pwede magbago-bago siya. Okay? So, ang degrees of freedom nito is 4. Let us consider again these uh, 4 values. 11, 12, 6, 4. 13, 10, 15, 9. 10, 8, 9, 12. 4, 8, 7, and 18. Ito yung uh, free to vary, itong 4 values na to. And then, yung ating fifth value, hindi pwedeng mag-vary na. Okay? Kasi ang mean natin ay 10, the sum should be 50. Okay? Para makuha natin yung sum of 50 from the second draw, dapat siya ay 17. Sa third draw, dapat 3. Sa fourth row, dapat 11. And the fifth row, dapat 13. So, therefore, ang degrees of freedom of uh, these five values is 4. That is 5 minus 1. Okay? Parang walang pinagkaiba yan. If you have five shirts to wear from Monday to Friday, uh, you have free to choose from Monday to Thursday kung anong susuotin mo. So, your degrees of freedom in wearing your shirt from Monday to, to Thursday is equal to 4. Pero sa fifth day, wala ka ng freedom to choose kasi nag-iisa na yung iyong shirt to wear on uh, Friday. So, ganun din. Sa katulad na paraan, yung sinabanggit natin, degrees of freedom. Okay? And the symbol for degrees of freedom is DF. And to compute for the degrees of freedom, all we have to do is to subtract the sample size N by 1. And ito yung sinasabi natin, uh, family of curves, or the T family of curves, depende yun sa degrees of freedom. Okay? If the degrees of freedom is equal to 5, mapansin natin, mas mababa yung uh, curve niya as compared to the Z curve. And when the degrees of freedom is 20, ganun din, approaching na siya dun sa ating Z curve. So, therefore, as n, as the number of size increases, yung ating uh, T curve is approaching to Z curve. So, okay, tandaan ang ating... Uh, T distribution consists of family of curves which depends on the degrees of freedom. There are rules in using C, Z test or T test. If population variance is known, gamitin natin Z test, the variable must be normally distributed if n is less than 30. Okay. Number two, kung hindi given ang population standard deviation, pero n is greater than or equal to 30, t-test pa rin ang gagamitin natin. Okay? If population is standard deviation is unknown and n is less than 30, gamitin pa rin natin yung t-test. But, dapat yung population natin should be approximately normally distributed. So, tandaan, ang basis in using z-test or t-test is if the population standard deviation is known or unknown. Okay? Ito yung summary niya. Kapag known ang population standard deviation, Z-test, ang gamitin natin sa formula, yung population standard deviation. Kapag hindi naman given yung population standard deviation, we use T-test at ang sample, uh, sample standard deviation ang gagamitin natin sa formula. And if N is less than 30, dapat yung variable natin is normally distributed. Okay? We have the assumptions for the t-test for a mean when population variance is unknown. Sample should be random sample. Either n is greater, greater than or equal to 30 or n is less than 30. If n is greater, greater than or equal to 30, uh, okay lang. But if n is less than 30, dapat population ay normally distributed. So now we have the procedure for the t-test. Number one, state the hypothesis and identify the claim. Find the critical values from table F. Yun yung table F na tinutukoy dito, yung t-distribution table, at i-attach ko ito dun sa ating, uh, lalagay ko sa Google Classroom. And then, compute the test value using the formula na prenesent ko sa inyo kanina. Yun yung t equal to x bar minus mu all over s over square root of n. Okay? And then, we're going to make the decision to reject or not to reject the null hypothesis based from our computed t-value. Okay? Kapag nasa rejection region, we reject the null. Kapag naman na sa 1 minus alpha, yung ating test value. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. And then, we summarize the results. Okay? That is our conclusion.
So I'm going to give you an example first on how to determine critical values to this ating uh, t-distribution table. And right after that, gagamitin natin itong procedure for the t-test uh, t in solving problem involving hypothesis testing. Thank you.